internet, my name is Ayla Tesler Mabe, and today we're going to talk all about how to find the right guitar for you. There's so much great information out there about all the technical things to look for, what kind of pickups, you know, what kind of wood is the fretboard made out of, is it a hollow body or solid body guitar, all of that stuff, and we will talk about that today. But what I really wanted to focus on is helping you reflect and think, why do you want to play music in the first place? Why do you want to play guitar? What music inspires you? And use that as the basis of trying to figure out what kind of guitar might be great for you. We're going to talk about some essential styles of music and what kind of guitars are typically found in these styles. We're going to talk about why they might work for these styles. You know, obviously a huge part of purchasing a guitar is the price. And you know, with any type of guitar, you'll always be able to find a huge range of very inexpensive to very expensive guitars of that style. But we're going to be talking about the particular features that might be appealing to you depending on what kind of music inspires you. So for all you country guitarists out there, or aspiring country guitarists, you're probably going to be looking for something with a little bit of twang. A guitar like the Telecaster right here is very well known for that. And if you like modern country, Brad Paisley, all that good stuff, this might be the guitar for you. So if you're looking for a guitar with a lot of twang, typically, you know, that's associated with single coil pickups like what you see here. In particular, the feature of a lot of tellies is, you know, this single coil pickup right here close to the neck and the single coil pickup here close to the bridge. And, you know, this guitar has a lot of range and you can get some really warm sounds with it. But it has the ability more so than most guitars to get that kind of twangy sound, which is characteristic of a lot of country music. So, you know, you want to be looking for a guitar where uh, you'll have that kind of you know, bite to the tone that could be considered twang. And a lot of that, again, has to do with the pickups. You know, the style of this guitar is kind of just twangy all around. That's, that's what Telecasters do. But again, single coil pickups, I think, are usually a major characteristic of that. So another reason country fans might love using a Telecaster is simply because so many iconic country players use it. You know, you can always look up what your favorite players use and that can definitely inform what kind of guitars you'd want to consider. But it just so happens with country and a lot of modern country, the Telecaster is kind of the guitar. A Fender Telecaster could be anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 generally. Of course, you can always find crazy stuff for crazy prices beyond that. Uh, and you can sometimes find discounts as well, you know, if you get lucky. But if that's out of your price range, you know, you could always consider Squire, which is like the little brother company of Fender. There are other companies that make, you know, guitars that are sort of emulating the basic characteristics of really any guitar you like the sound of. So if you're trying to be conscious of your budget, you know, there's a lot to consider there. You know, the twang. is so characteristic to this guitar. And, you know, I immediately think of music that just has that flavor. Now, if you really like old school country, there's another route you could go down as well. The Gretsch hollow body. I mean, Really, any hollow body might do the trick, but Gretsch's in particular have been such a staple of iconic old school country. You know, thinking of Glenn Campbell, Chet Atkins, you know, players like that. Uh, a lot of those early country players were definitely very inspired by jazz to an extent. And, you know, you see and hear a lot of crossover stylistically between jazz, old school country, and even in the choice of guitar. However, while this guitar has the possibility to have a very, you know, dark sort of tone to it, you can hear that's a very dark tone. But 
as almost all Gretsches have the capability of sounding like, can be very bright and twangy, which is perfect for country music. And a lot of it comes down to, you know, the Gretsch pickups themselves. Uh, they're, you know, made by the company most of the time. Really, most Gretsch hollow bodies have that kind of old school country hollow body twang to them. If you like old school country, this might be the guitar for you. So let's talk about jazz. And here's the thing, this guitar actually has quite a bit in common with you know, that last guitar I showed you, the Gretsch hollow body, because this too is a hollow body. However, it's got a lot less twang, different pickups. Uh, right here I've got some humbuckers, and these pickups are known to have a much darker sort of sound to them. And, you know, the size of the body as well, and the hollow body nature of it definitely gives a very dark tone. Of course, it's not only dark, you can get some bright sounds too. But of course it has the capability to really have that dark, jazzy tone that jazz players usually love the sound of. So if you do love the sound of that and you love that style of music, if you love people like Wes Montgomery, Joe Pass, this might be a great guitar to consider. And here's the thing, jazz guitar players might even get bigger guitars than this, uh, archtop guitars, which have an even bigger body at the back. It's totally up to you. Um, I think those guitars aren't limited to only jazz, but a guitar like this, which is a 335, might be more versatile than a full-on archtop guitar, just because you also see this used in some other styles, because it can inherently sound brighter most of the time. But here's the thing, there are always exceptions to these rules, because you can sometimes find certain guitars where they mix and match characteristics that you wouldn't normally find um, in those types. But typically, you're gonna find hollow body guitars with humbuckers, you know, deeper, richer tone. And for that reason, it's great for aspiring jazz guitar players. So a guitar like this right here, it's an Epiphone, which is the little brother company of Gibson. You can probably find a guitar like this for somewhere between 600 to 1,000. And that might be a good place to start if you're looking for you know, a hollow body. Um, there are also other companies that make hollow body guitars and you might find some that are even less than 600, especially if you look for a used one as well. But if you wanted to look at the big brother company of Epiphone and look at an actual Gibson hollow body, could be a couple thousand uh, and it can get pretty pricey, but it's worth looking into. Let's talk about traditional blues. If you like old school blues players like B.B. King, Freddie King, T-Bone Walker, you might also fall under the category of people who would want to consider a hollow body or semi-hollow body guitar. The last guitar we spoke about, the ES-335, is a definite staple of blues guitar playing, but I also wanted to pull out another one, the ES-339, which is really similar, but has a smaller body. And again, similar characteristics to the last one. It's not a solo body, it's solid body. I almost said words that didn't exist. But <laughs> what I meant to say is uh, it's not a solid body. As you can tell, there are F holes. Even just knocking on the guitar, um, you can hear that it's not filled in completely. And again, that's a major characteristic of a lot of blues guitars, um, both of modern and past blues. Humbucker pickups definitely are the norm in this style. Um, we will talk a little bit more about, you know, blues guitarists who might want to go in a different direction. But again, if you like old school players, especially people like B.B. King, you know, that kind of style, this could be 
a great starting place. So you might notice I'm not wearing a jacket right now, and that's because blues music is just so cool, all right? So, wait, but you usually wear jackets for when it is cool. Wait, that's... Yeah, that's <laughs> So it's really a matter of personal preference, you know, if you want a hollow body guitar, you know, if you want a 335 or a guitar with a bigger body versus, you know, a 339 like this, which has a smaller body, you know, it's a matter of comfort. It's also a matter of, you know, the tone itself. You'll probably find, you know, fuller, bigger tones from bigger guitars and vice versa for smaller guitars. Uh, and that being said, you could still find some really nice rich, deep, dark tones, which is great for blues. And it sounds so nice with overdrive on as well. talk a little bit about rock and roll uh, and if you know a little bit about the progression of music history you know that a lot of rock and roll came from the blues and if you like players like Chuck Berry let's say and you like rock and roll that has a lot of gospel and R&B and blues influence on full display you're probably also gonna want some sort of hollow body that's why I still have my 335 in hand right now it's great for that kind of stuff you know a little bit of this sort of action works really well. However, there's another direction you can go in for blues and rock and roll type music. Nice and bright sounding, has a lot of you know, just sort of attack to it. It's a great sounding instrument. As blues music was developing and subsequently rock and roll, there were a whole bunch of artists who were also going in that direction, but taking things in, again, a twangier sort of direction. The Stratocaster is, for many reasons, a guitar that is associated with twang, much more so than a hollow body might be. And a lot of that has to do with the pickups. A lot of strats have single coils. Um, but even then, just the make, of the make of the guitar itself lends itself really well to jangly, twangy sort of tones. Especially when you're on in-between pickups like this. You can hear there's really cool character to that. You know, it's a very versatile guitar, as we will discover as this video goes on. But, you know, as rock and roll was developing, you had a lot of West Coast bands in the USA taking those influences, but creating something called surf rock and uh, the Stratocaster is great for anyone who likes the Beach Boys and this is what it could sound like. Very uh, bright sounding, breezy, makes me think of the ocean. And another note I wanted to quickly make right now, in modern music currently there is a whole movement of pop indie pop artists who take a lot of influence from surf music, it seems like. Um, for example, Mac DeMarco, if you are an indie fan, you might like the Stratocaster as well. That's another great use of the Stratocaster in modern music. But let's bring things back to a more clearly blues-based, rock-based, you know, kind of world. If you like Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, the Strat has been, you know, a very important staple of, of those styles. And again, if you like any of those players or any similar players, this might be the guitar for you. So all that being said, if you like guitar players who have creamier, 
really rich, warm tones. Like let's say Eric Clapton is in his Cream era or Angus Young of ACDC. You might want to consider this guitar right here, the Gibson SG. And you know, the debate between Fender and Gibson is a heated one in the guitar community. A lot of it is personal preference, um, you know, humbuckers are a huge part of it. As you see, this guitar here has humbuckers and you can hear that as well in the guitar itself. You know, humbuckers have generally a darker, richer sort of tone, whereas single coil pickups have a brighter sort of tone with a more trebly kind of feel to them. You know, there's so many other factors that go into this, you know, just the wood used in the guitar, you know, uh, the body itself, you know, what is it made out of, how thick it, is it or thin it is, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's really important. So I got a bit of overdrive on. Let's listen to some cream style playing. Put it in the bridge position. And I will say a very cool feature of Gibson guitars or any guitars that allow you to control the volume of each pickup is you can do this kind of thing Which is a lot of fun and that's a staple of Randy Rhodes guitar playing speaking of Randy Rhodes That's a great segue into the next guitar. I want to show you. Let's talk about the Gibson Les Paul Randy Rhodes played one so did many icons like Jimmy Page or not does currently do Jimmy Page currently uses one Joe Bonamassa, Slash, so many players, and sometimes thought of as being even richer and um, sort of fuller than an SG. But that being said, that's also a heated debate in the community. I don't want to take part of it. You guys can debate it out amongst yourselves. But like, you know, the kind of tone you're hearing now. I think you get the idea, the kind of music I'm talking about here. Uh, and again, humbuckers are usually a part of the deal. Though this particular guitar has the ability to coil tap. Whoa, where you can get some kind of single coil tones. And you can tell that's sort of a single coil tone because it was humming very loudly, as is often the case with single coils. The difference is really subtle, but again, that just highlights, you know, kind of what happens when you go in the direction of single coils versus humbuckers, you know, um, the character of each of those pickups, hugely important thing to explore. Even more important than the pickups sometimes is, you know, as I've been talking about, the actual body of the guitar itself. Like a Les Paul, obviously, is very much a hollow body. Usually very heavy guitars, you know, uh, and that's usually why they also have great sustain. And that's what they're known for. And, you know, great for, hard rock lead guitar for that reason. As you can hear, the sustain is quite impressive. Uh, and so this is a great guitar for any rockers out there. It will probably cost you anywhere from two to three thousand dollars, though, you know, these guitars are known to be pretty pricey and can go way beyond 3000 as well. If you like this guitar, but want to consider something less expensive, again, Epiphone Les Pauls are another direction you could go in, or really any other guitar that, you know, is modeled off of the Les Paul guitar itself, you know, in its body style and make and the pickups and everything. So if you like this style, you should check it out more. So let's say the last guitars weren't quite heavy enough for you. Well, you could always consider a guitar that was specifically made for metal or shredding type music. PRS is definitely a company that comes to mind. Charvel, Jackson, Ibanez, all of those companies make guitars that are definitely very K 
catered to you know that style of playing. And of course they're versatile and they can do a lot more than that, but if you find a guitar that gives you great access to the higher frets, you know, has maybe a slimmer neck, um, you know, has humbuckers or even Seymour Duncan pickups, those guitars are usually really great for high gain situations like you'd find in metal. They're really comfortable and great for highly technical playing that you'd find in you know, virtuosic shredding like Steve Vai. Again, if those styles appeal to you, you definitely want to check out those brands that I just mentioned. pinch harmonic in there and you know the thing is a lot of these companies you know that I mentioned previously and a lot of those shredder type guitars you know might also have a tremolo setup you know which allows you to use a tremolo arm to get crazy dive bombs that a lot of shredders love obviously this is not an example of that but you know this guitar has a lot of easy access to the higher frets you know humbuckers which are great for handling high gain situations. I would like to warn you, however, if you are gonna look at getting a tremolo system, be very conscious of whether or not the guitar has a Floyd Rose system, because if you are planning to do a lot of dive, bom dive bombs and you never want your guitar to go out of tune, a Floyd Rose system is amazing, because then you can do all the dive bombs you want, your guitar will never go out of tune. If you don't think that you're gonna be doing quite so much of that, you know, Floyd Rose systems can really be a pain to deal with sometimes because it can make it really hard to tune the guitar. So that's an important thing to consider. Ask yourself, if you're a shredder or metal lover, you know, you know how many dive bombs are you going to do? Do you want a Floyd Rose system? Do you even want a tremolo system at all? Because if not, you know, some guitars are great for shredding, uh, but don't have that tremolo system. It's up to you. These are all great questions to ask. Again, the pickups are really important. Are they ideal for handling high gain situations? You know, humbuckers and Seymour Duncan pickups usually are great for that, but there are some other options out there too. And do you have access to the higher frets? A lot of shredders definitely want that. And these are all great things to think about if this style of playing appeals to you. So today we talked all about different guitars and the genres that they're often associated with, just because that can be a really fun and inspiring way to look for your first guitar or look for your next guitar and uh, you know, look for one that is strongly associated with players or genres that really inspire you. And all that being said, this video is honestly kind of hard to make because none of these rules are really set in stone. You know, you can find that any guitar in the right circumstances might work for any style really and can be versatile in their own right if you sort of tap into how that guitar functions best. You know, it's ultimately about how you connect with the instrument too. That's the most important thing, you know, being able to hold the guitar in your hands and feel comfortable with it. I think that's kind of the number one most important thing to look for. But I hope that this provided a little bit of insight into where you could start your search. So please leave a comment down below of what guitar you have or what guitars you have. I'd actually be really interested to know. And I hope you have a wonderful day.